So you were just diagnosed with cancer. You just received this very bad news. And now what's next? Who do you tell this about? Who do you talk to? Who do you go for? Let's answer to these questions right now. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl Tali and this is Lemon Lady, the channel where we talk about my breast cancer journey and many other topics. And today, as you guys can tell by the title, we are going to discuss a little bit about who do you talk to and how do you approach these people when you are on your cancer journey? How do you break the news? How do you approach people to say, hey, guess what? I have bad news. I have cancer. Let's discuss this right now. But first, if you're new here to the channel and this is a topic that interests you, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you for being here. Give your like, your thumbs up to this video so then YouTube can recommend this video to more people and I can reach my first goal, which is to get to at least a thousand subscribers. All right, guys. The first person who knew about my cancer journey was probably Maggie <laughs> because she's always with me all the time. And... Uh, she definitely saw me crying and receiving the bad news, but let's be serious now. When we are talking about people, family, relatives, friends, who do you go to, who do you talk to, and how do you break the news? So, of course, this is not something easy to say, and you don't want to, you are freaking out, and you don't want to freak other people out. So, the very first thing that I would say, that I would recommend is start talking with someone who you can really relate to, who you can be yourself, who you can be honest, who you can talk about whatever, and this person is not going to have a heart attack right away. I love my family. They are extremely precious in my life. They are aware of my disease and my treatment and everything that is going on. But at first, I didn't want to bring them this worry. I didn't want to concern them. I wasn't even sure about what was going on with myself. So I first talked to two other friends. So Milena and Bruna, if you are watching this video, thank you so much. You guys helped me out so much and you continue helping me every day. Thank you. Love you guys. So the reason why I first went to my friends is because I knew that they would be able to get the news and not necessarily have a heart attack right away whether as if i had talked to my mom first for example she would probably break into pieces and at that moment in time because i was also broken hearted with the news i didn't want that i just wanted someone who i could vent with um so that was my personal experience i chose these two friends who i talk to on a daily basis and i told them guys i have some bad news and I started layering the news. So I didn't just say at once, oh, I have cancer. And by the way, I might become infertile. And by the way, I'm going to lose my breasts. And then by the way, you know, all of the news at once. No, I basically told them I'm very upset uh, because I was told that these lumps uh, that I have in my breast, they are cancer regionals. And now I'm going to have to go through treatment. And then as a patient, little by little, the more informed I got, the more information I passed but always layering them because uh, it's huge news for sure. And you don't want to just vomit everything at the person's face and say, oh, I have cancer and uh, I'm going to have to do this and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And by the way, at that time, I didn't even know really what was going to happen. I was just in fear of my future situation, but I didn't really know if I was going to have to do a lumpectomy, a mastectomy. By the way, I didn't even know these medical terms at the time. So just go little by little. So first is tell people who you can really trust and who you can be yourself with. So my friends gave me all the support I needed. And then after that, I felt strong enough to talk to my family, which is another layer of, um, of care and concern and all of that. The second thing I would say is don't say everything at once. Don't vomit at the people's face, just like that, blah, blah, blah. Because the same way you got shocked, these people are going to get shocked as well. So just try to take it easy. As you get more medical information, as you start the treatment and you understand things little by little, that's when you can start, you know, talking to people. Uh, also be careful because the internet, of course, has a lot of awesome resources, but also a lot of bad information out there that is going to make you feel scared. So just take it easy, okay? Because it's a lot of information when you first get the diagnosis. I didn't even know that cancer could be categorized in so many ways, so many different forms. I didn't know, for example, that cancer could have receptors for um, proteins and hormones and other things. I... I never knew about this. I never had someone extremely close to me who, 
who had cancer, who had to fight cancer, who had to go through this journey. So uh, everything was new. And as I said, the medical terms as well. So, you know, just start educating yourself little by little and talk to people about these things as you get to know them also little by little, because there are a lot of layers out there. Um, you first discover you have cancer and then you have to understand what type of cancer you have, um, if it has receptors or not, uh, what, what's the stage, what's the stage, what's the grade, um, what the treatment is going to be, and then you understand the treatment, what's the difference between chemotherapy, immunotherapy, why you're going this route and not that route for your treatment and so many other things. So just make sure to get informed little by little and to also pass this information little by little. So recapping, vent with someone who you really trust and then gather information little by little. Then you start telling other people who are gonna come to you also with a whole lot of questions. That's why you need to be, at least with my family, I needed to be sure uh, or most certain about the things I wanted to discuss with them about. Um, because of course, if I just told them I have cancer, they would ask me, but what type of cancer is it? What are your chances? What's the treatment about? And, you know, they would come with all these questions that at that time, right, right, right away, I didn't even know the answers are. So I just took a little bit of my time to educate myself, to understand what was going on with me and what the future <laughs> looked like. And then I started sharing this information. Next, you want to start telling people who are uh, part of your life but not necessarily your family. For example, your employers, for example, friends from church or people who you see on a weekly basis, but they don't necessarily live with you, but it would be good for them to know about it. If you work in any sort of projects and then now your schedule might change, you know, any anything that is gonna affect your schedule, you need to let these people know what you're going through because you might change a little bit during that time when you get a diagnosis, you might be scared, you might be filled with fear, you might um, need a little time for yourself, maybe take a day off or something. And then also you have so many appointments in the beginning of the journey, especially because they want to investigate what's going on. So chances are, if you work, you're going to have to need some time off from work and things like that. So then I would say, talk to your employer, talk to the people who are part of your life and let them know in a brief way what's going on. You don't need to give all the details. Like I didn't necessarily tell my employer everything like, oh, my cancer uh, tested positive for, for estrogen and it's HER2 positive and blah, blah, blah. I don't need to give all these details, but I definitely needed to report that um, I was diagnosed with a disease that now I needed some time to start treatment. And you wanna do it this way because then you have a good support system you have your friends who you can vent to. If I want to just make jokes about being boobless or whatever, I'll go to my friends. Um, if I want to have some sort of emotional hug and I need some extra support, then my family is definitely there for me, praying for me and all of that. And then on a more practical way, if I need time off from work, then my employer also, uh, to some extent, got my back. So I would say this is the main things that you need to do, the main people you need to talk to. This way you have a good support system because then you have the people who you can vent with, you can talk about anything, you can laugh about it, you can cry about it. Then you have your family also praying for you, giving you emotional support and strength and uh, helping you make some decisions even. And then you have your employer in a more practical way, just um, tr dealing with you on a daily basis, really what, what do you need from work? Do you need time off? Do you need this? Do you need that? Okay, now on top of that, what I personally did was I kept everything to myself um, for some time because I was still digesting the information. I didn't necessarily want to just tell everybody what was going on when I had cancer previously. By the way, if you're not aware of that, you can check my previous videos uh, where I talk about the cancer I had in my appendix. Um, but when that happened at that time, I opened a GoFundMe page and then people from the internet, people who I knew in person, uh, people who didn't know me, uh, but who, you know, got emotional about it. They helped me financially a little bit. And then, of course, the news is spread. So that was very helpful. But at the same time, I had people calling my family back home in Brazil, asking about me all the time. Uh, people who were part of our lives and also people 
who we weren't really talking to for the past years and all of a sudden these people were calling oh uh we haven't really talked in five years but is it true that talika has cancer so uh i would say some people were truly concerned and some people were nosy and that bugged me a little bit because my family got my back a lot during that process um, because of course I'm living abroad and a lot of people don't have my contact here uh, but I was also of course contacted through social media and at just this time I felt different um, even though financial help is always a bonus but I felt like I wanted to digest everything by myself and then later on I decided that I wanted to share my experience with the world and that's why I created Lemonade channel um, I actually gave continuity to the channel I had before, which was about mukbangs. And I just feel very comfortable sharing my story with you guys because I, I know that during my phase here, I also look for people to connect with. And I feel like it would be nice to genuinely share information about my journey with people who are out there going through the same thing or similar stories. But anyways, going back to what I was saying, um, after talking to these people who I mentioned previously, I decided that I wanted to share this story with, with very few people, not just everybody out there, uh, apart from the channel, because a lot of you guys don't know me in person. So apart from the channel in person here, I have a selected small group of people, friends and known people, uh, acquaintances that know about my cancer journey. And I prefer to keep it this way because a lot of people, as I mentioned, are nosy. A lot of people, they just want to know about what was going on, but they don't really mean to care for you in any way. They want to investigate your life, but they're never going to offer you, oh, you're going to the Cross Cancer Institute. Do you need a ride? Uh, in fact, I even had the situation where I asked for a ride once and the person let me down. So you just need to be a little bit selective because I believe that during the treatment, being in your best state of mind and mental health is so important. It's as important as your physical health. And you definitely don't want to be sharing about your life with anyone who is just not going to add anything to it. You know those things that we say, keep it a little secret? Yeah, it's kind of like that. I mean, at some point you're going to get bald. Uh, you might get bald. Or you're just going to be looking somehow that might show that you are committed with the disease. But still... Um, I'm, I'm probably a bold person right now. I go to places, I, I live my life, I go to the supermarket, I drive the kids, I do everything uh, without being bugged about my appearance. If people want to judge, then judge. I don't really care. And of course, at some point, your image, your appearance is going to be a statement of your disease. But even then, that doesn't mean that I need to go to everybody and start telling everybody, oh, I have cancer, this is what I have, blah, blah, blah. No. I just live my life. If you want to look at me, look at me. I'm pretty. <laughs> if you want to stare at me, stare at me. If you don't, that's fine. I just continue living my life. Another little tip I'm going to give, which I kind of mentioned already in this video, but I want to say it again, is avoid using too many medical terms. First of all, you don't even understand fully what's going on at first, so you don't even know information enough to be able to pass to others. But even when you do know about your condition better, um, and you are explaining things to other people, you don't necessarily need to give medical terms all the time. You can eventually explain, but you don't need to say, oh, I'm going through a mastectomy. You can just say, they're going to remove the cancer from my breast. Uh, you know, sometimes you need to simplify things to people uh, because people start overthinking and they start having this idea in mind that everything is overcomplicated. And really, there's, there's no need. You know, uh, eventually you're going to be in this journey for quite some time and people around you, people who are really part of your life, they're going to know what a lumpectomy and what a mastectomy is. But if that's not the case, um, you know, they know you're going to go through surgery. That's it. That's that's all they need to know. And of course, I'm using lumpectomy, lumpectomy and mastectomy as an example here because I'm dealing with breast cancer but uh, and also lymph nodes. But you guys apply this to your own reality. Okay. Another tip I would like to give to you guys is um, ask what the people know about your situation, about your condition, about your disease, about your treatment. Um, and I found myself doing that quite a lot with my friends and people who I was getting to know in, an, in a romantic level. Uh, because, yeah, I, I'm young and I still want to date. I still want to 
eventually get married, have my family and all of that. So I, I found myself a couple of times explaining the situation to people like, oh, by the way, uh, I don't know if you're aware of, but I'm treating cancer, I'm on treatment. And the person would be like, oh, really? What type of cancer? Breast cancer. Oh, wow. Okay, but are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, but I'm going through chemotherapy. Do you know anything about uh, chemotherapy or breast cancer? Do you know anyone who has had cancer before? Or do you know what this is about? It's important to ask what type of knowledge the person has because some people have never had any contact with a cancer patient before and they really don't know what to expect. And some other people have had like, oh really, my mother uh, had it or I had a neighbor who is on treatment as well or anything like that. So just ask the person what he or she knows about it because that can save you some time explaining that can save you some tears explaining sometimes as well and uh and if the person knows a little bit about what you're going through this person is probably going to be more sensitive about what you're going through and is going to understand things a little bit better because of course when you are going through treatment you have very specific needs not only i'm not only talking about the treatment itself i'm talking about in an emotional level and it's important to know what they know so you can add information or you can even subtract information because some people might think that, oh, you have cancer, you're going to die right away. So you can explain to them that things are not like this nowadays. Anyways, just got to have a little bit of touch over there to know how to deal with the people. The last tip I would like to share in this video is respect the person who you're talking to, respect his or her moment, and try to put yourself in his or her shoes. Yes, you are the victim, you are the one who is sick, but you need to understand that everybody has feelings and people can react in different ways. Some people are going to be really upset. Some people are going to cry with you. Some people are going to show like they are emotionless because they just can't express what they are thinking or, or feeling about your news. So just give the person some space, some time to digest all the news the same way that you needed that time. The other people will probably need as well. And just be respectful uh, in a sense that if you know that that person is hysterical and that person is probably gonna show a pity party for you like oh my gosh I have cancer <laughs> just just try to approach it in a way you can balance this you don't have to hit the person by the front you can just you can just balance it um, the same way if you are talking to someone who is emotionless like I have cancer oh sorry don't expect this person to start crying for you because the person will clearly not. So, you know, just, just try to have a little bit of expectations, but talk to people with an open heart, with an open mind. Um, give as much or as little information as you would like to, but respecting other people and respecting yourself, respecting your journey as well. If you, if you feel like uh, someone shouldn't know as much, then don't tell as much. If you feel like someone should know more about it, then start sharing more about it. That happened to me as well. I, I had a friend that uh, I used to talk to very, very, very often. And this person wasn't understanding my time as a cancer patient. She started charging me for not being a good friend. Like, you're not being a good friend because you don't give me attention. You don't talk to me. You're supposed to call me. You're supposed to do this and that. And I, I was telling her, I'm grieving. I'm going through the process of accepting my 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 diagnosis and understanding my treatment and focusing on my self-healing journey. So I'm sorry if I'm stepping back a little bit on our friendship. It's nothing about you. It's just me digesting everything that I'm going through. Plus, I just lost all my hair. Plus, I'm so busy with treatment and working and, you know, being divided um, through all the, the things that I need to get done. And then I realized that that person wasn't mature enough, wasn't red enough to get as much from my friendship anymore. So I started backing off a little more and now she knows about me, but she knows very little. She knows what she needs to know. And the opposite also happened with people who I thought they were not gonna be there for me. And, and I shared little information and later on, these people were contacting me. They were worried about me. They were offering me help, like, do you need uh, right to go to to your appointments. Is there anything I can do for you? Can I bring you a meal? Can I buy you a pair of socks? I mean, I don't know. Can I just give you a hug? 
hi, I'm just calling to check on you. Like these people, I realized they were truly concerned about me and therefore I started sharing more information. And I brought these people closer to me to be uh, to become part of my emotional, supportive, amazing system. Okay, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Uh, it's a short video, but I hope it's very uh, useful. I look at for videos like this when I got my diagnosis, so hopefully I'm going to be helping someone out there. <laughs> Maggie? <laughs> Maggie's is snoring here. Anyways, she's like, I don't care about you guys, I'm just sleeping. Anyways, um, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time. As I always say, your time is your most precious currency. So thank you so much for sharing it with me. And I hope to see you in my next video, which is going to be on the weekend. So stay tuned and I'll see you soon. Bye.